Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to a brand new episode of Kaiju Conversation. Thank God I finally was able to say it. I'm your host, E.T., and joining me as always is my co-host and currently my tormentor, Rex. Tormentor? I'm offended by this. He, This, this is- man has been <laughs> forcing me to stay here for an extra 30 minutes. Can you believe that, honestly? You're the one that started this. Okay, just if what? you if you want to get the whole story, just check out the bloopers for this episode oh, when they go live. Wow, wow. And he uses my torment as a segue <laughs> for, for advertisement. Can you believe this, guys? It's been – I swear I've tried to start this intro like six times. It's been five minutes, and I couldn't get past the welcome everybody back to a brand new episode because – Either I, I would mess up, or right as I start, Rex would start talking, and it just right as he start just before he starts. Actually, <laughs> Rex is really feisty, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh God! So how have you been, man? Uh, pretty good, minus my torment and the current gaslighting. I am oh my God being subjected to right now. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. Because it's I, true. No. Stop. <laughs> stop. Anyways. So, yes, anyways. We are on episode 49. Whoa. We're getting on the big 5 Right. Like, next episode's 50. Like, that's crazy. Man, what are we going to do for episode 50? Well, if you follow the podcast, you should see that we have plans for the next year. So oh, stay tuned. Man, I'm just linking everything right now. Oh, God. I swear, you are like – you would be a really good salesman. Have you ever done sales? I work retail. Hmm. Do you ever <sighs> pitch anything for sales or – I mean, a little bit. Yeah. Like if somebody's trying to buy windshield wipers, I'll say, have you tried the Rain-X windshield wipers? I personally use them, and they're great. I love them, and they're really effective while driving in the rain. And if you haven't, why don't you get the Rain-X windshield wiper fluid? Because that makes it even better. I see. This so episode is not, respond- it is not at all sponsored by Rain-X. So I took a Yeah, so cool. – before we get into the main topic, we always love to talk about any tokusatsu we have watched recently. So, Rex, have you watched any tokusatsu lately? Oh, uh, well, I. It, it seems the ring saga, it just never ends for me at the moment. It's a I, constant spiral. I, I sw- <laughs> Shut up. I swear, the audience is probably sick of this basically being a de facto a de facto ring podcast at this point so i'm just gonna say i rewatched the first ring with some family because i got the arrow box set it is very cool um and i and i actually like the movie even more than i did when we did our podcast episode on it interesting all right so i take back what i said i will i will put ring above snake girl and the silver head witch oh good thank Peace you in the universe has been restored you could say it has been restored as for me uh i've started getting back into ultraman 80 i finished the first disc uh, oh. finally after buying it so i've been watching some of that and i watched the machine girl so i've been trying oh, to get back into a little that. tokusatsu I mean, it was decent. It's uh, it's a genre of tokusatsu that I think is going to be weird for me. It's mm-hmm. like post verses, but it was all like late two thousands, early twenty tens, and they all mm-hmm. kind of have the similar vibe. There's a few I other have similar crew. This is true. This is very true. Um, so it's something that I'm going to have to see if I can get used to. Uh, have you seen Tokyo Girl Police? No, but that's because I'm I'm holding off on getting it because I want to get the version with the short films because okay. I gotta I gotta have it all I gotta have it all. Damn, of course, typical you. Yeah, yeah, me. I'm not. I can't. I can't be happy with the basics. I gotta have more. <laughs> 
I'm curious to see your reaction to that film. I mean, I like the original uh, short film that Tokyo Gore Police was a remake of, Intomia yeah, Extinction. Kind of, kind of, yeah, I haven't yeah, seen that. One, that. I, I like that one a lot. In fact, uh, I recently was on uh, Chill with Kaiju Kim to talk about uh, tokusatsu releases that I would recommend people check out that are available in America. And I included Intomia Extinction on my list because of how – I th- did I include it? I think no. Wait, Pretty did sure I? You did. I think I did. It was either that or Tokyo Gore no, Police. No, you did Anatomy Extinction. I, I don't recall okay. Gore Police. You oh, and been. then I did Tokyo Gore Police as a bonus recommendation. That's uh, right. Uh. Um, Man, you are good at promoting today, aren't you? Yeah, I know. I'm just. I'm like, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. It's almost like this whole episode might be about promoting upcoming stuff. Oh my god! And so look I at this segue. Getting, I, I guess we're just getting the past out of the way and preparing for the future of right. 2023. 2023, the big year for not only our podcast but for Tokusatsu. And this episode today, just like we did last year, we'll be talking about what is to come in Tokusatsu in 2023. Mm. So let's go ahead and get right into this. We're going to talk about the big one just to get it out of the way. If you want to hear a full discussion about it, definitely check out our bonus episode number five, I believe it was, where we did a recap of Godzilla Day 2022, where we discussed this film in great detail. Mm -hmm. Godzilla Zero, directed by Takashi Yamazaki. Yes. So it's Toho's big return to the Godzilla franchise. I actually uh, – Variety uh, published an article recently talking about how Toho is like really pushing 2023 this year, mm-hmm. uh, like this this upcoming year because it's mm-hmm. going to be their big like – their big year um, after their – after COVID-19 hit and they've been trying to recover since. Yeah, uh, I mean I, I remember hearing that I think it's from November 3rd of 23. They're doing like a big year long Godzilla Day promote or Godzilla 70th anniversary promotions. Mm -hmm. So Toho is going to come back harder than we have seen them in probably a long time. And I think Mm -hmm. this is just because the the Japanese market is becoming more and more popular. As mm. anime grows in popularity, so is a lot of their other stuff. Of course, mm. Drive My Car uh, is definitely going to be in the running for like, or it was it was last year's Oscars, was it not? Or yeah. it was. Oh, uh, it, it won best foreign film. Mm-hmm. Deservedly so, so, might I add, brilliant right. film. So and Japanese uh, Japanese film is becoming more and more relevant again. Uh, mm-hmm. I think this foreign is part of the... becoming more relevant in general. What was that? Foreign cinema is becoming more relevant in general. Mm-hmm. As as kind of the because it used to be like the oceans were so big that that stuff did not get you know brought over. But as yeah. those those that distance seems to be getting shorter with the internet and whatnot, we're seeing a huger push for international. Uh, appeal to these stuff uh these films and i think asian cinema in general like since parasite i would say has become yes. more relevant in the in the general audience oh most definitely can't can't understate how much parasite has actually done for <laughs> foreign cinema mm-hmm. i and i think that's that's great especially for Asian cinema, because now people seem to be interested in stuff like that. Mm. And so I'm excited to see what Toho is going to do here, uh, specifically with Godzilla Zero, because they have a Academy Award winning director making it, writing Mm. it, producing it, and directing the effects. Uh, You mentioned uh, prior to the recording that in a recent article – it was said that uh, Yamazaki was putting everything he's learned in the decades he's had to prepare yeah. for this. He's as putting the, it as the um, what was it? The director of film planning at Toho said 
uh, this is the culmination of Yamazaki's film. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, we both kind of alluded to this in our recording uh, prior that, you know, Yamazaki has been wanting to do this for at least 10 years since always two, but even before then, like he's a Godzilla fan. He probably has wanted to make his own Godzilla film for, for decades. decades. So I think this is good because here we have a Toho that is financially stable enough to create something. Even with Shin Godzilla, they had to get some crowdfunding to like pay for part of it. So mm -hmm. this time around, that's not the case. And we have somebody attached that hopefully can bring to the table enough love for the franchise that we can get something much like Honda uh, did in the Showa era. Hopefully mm. we'll see. We'll see. And I think Toho is, I hope that Toho is wanting to also bring this internationally because of films like Demon Slayer in 2020, that mm -hmm. was a huge hit in Japan and it was quickly brought over to the States through Funimation with a dub and a sub mm -hmm. and it it was top 10 box office in the states as well mm. so hopefully I mean, Demon Slayer is also a very very popular series right but i i would argue godzilla has enough international appeal that it could do the same heck uh, no, no, godzilla definitely. against mecha godzilla for its uh, fathom events I think was like number seven in the U.S. Yeah, uh, I thought that office. was surprisingly successful. Yeah, so I don't see why they wouldn't. And if Toho, because Toho did the Fathom events, Toho could work to have a like U.S. subtitled release pretty mm -hmm. soon after mm -hmm. through Fathom events if they mm -hmm. don't want to work with Funimation or I mean that's what Super Mario is doing. It seems. Mm -hmm. uh, but Subaraya also has a broker that uh, true, true. But unlike to uh, unlike Subaraya, Toho does have a LA branch, Toho International, which yeah. they could be working with uh, to get it stateside. So maybe we can see Godzilla Zero next year. But I mean, I, I would learn the new management there. I think Toho International. I feel like I heard something about that. I to my understanding, wrong. Chris Mowry is still the head of that. Oh, no, they – what it was was they hired on some Crunchyroll, uh, ex-Crunchyroll oh, workers to right. to push a digital marketplace, to push that's like – right. Essentially what I gathered is they want to do like the Godzilla Plus app mm -hmm. where like you can buy official Toho merch through – by by Toho through Toho in America mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay like go through Baiyi or Criterion like Toho's wanting to create a direct link between ja uh, American fans and the Toho bank account so Toho can make pure profits because they know they like can. Godzilla and uh, uh, what you call it Godzilla Island on I mean, Godzilla Island's supposed to be coming to okay. America on on youtube subtitle exactly so um, and that should be coming in 2023 as well so there's another little bonus oh, yeah. toho's doing and speaking of uh bonus toho things in 2023 uh can't forget the uh next uh godzilla day short film correct which probably will have gigan or not gigan uh megalon Megal. and Jet jaguar yeah, I mean, they've confirmed that they are celebrating the 50th anniversary of both characters. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't wait to see the next crowdfunding short get privated on YouTube, you know, or not even uploaded, just have it be streamed and then privated. Right, and then all that hard work goes to pretty all that, much nothing. All that fan money uh, gets, mm -hmm. you know, hidden for some time. <laughs> but thankfully, the fans will steal that footage and then post it other places. And then Toho and so will take that down. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> Toho for you. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is the flagship of Tokusatsu 
to be honest, Godzilla Zero. It's the king of the monsters and that revolutionizing tokusatsu brand that reinvented mm. the genre. Mm. So, And probably one of, if not the most internationally recognized characters in the genre. Right, exactly. So definitely that's going to be exciting. And like I said, I don't know if we're going to get a 2023 release in the States. Maybe we can. I don't. It it's took, not impossible. It's not impossible. I it, mean, it took it, Shin Godzilla seven months. Was so it I don't months? know. Yeah, it was. It was. It premiered in July. Well, it wasn't seven months. It was. It, it wasn't a seven months for like the physical. Yeah, it was seven months for the physical, but the release theatrically was it was like two. Two was it July? It came out in it Japan. Came out in or July was it May? in Japan, and then and it was October in October. Yeah, so almost about three months. So oh, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, we'll pretty. see. Maybe Toho isn't gonna because part of that was pictures. Toho. Uh, Toho was trying to find a distributor. That so maybe true. this time Toho will just go through Fathom events. Mm. Uh, I don't know. But I, mm. I could see them try to do like a simul release in the States November 3rd, like a special Fathom events of, you know, maybe. showing. Maybe. Celebrating the Please. 70th yeah. anniversary of Godzilla. I don't know. Australia, please. Australia would be great. You guys need some stuff. But besides the King of the Monsters, his... They talk too much about him. Yeah. Uh, his follow-up, or his runner-up, or flyer-up, also is going <laughs> to be getting his own remake reboot in 2023 as yes. Gamera Rebirth. Yes. It's been too long since we've seen the big man. So, I mean, for me, I'm personally indifferent about this. I think Gamera ended on a perfect note with Gamera the Brave. Mm -hmm. um, it is an anime. We don't know if it's a movie or TV show yet, but it's going to yeah. be an anime uh, by Katakawa Animation distributed through Netflix. So you'll probably get a dub and a sub. Netflix just be snatching up all the kaiju properties. They are. They honestly are. Um I don't know how to feel about this. Like, like I said, I'm just indifferent. Like, I mean, there isn't too much to go off at the moment. Um, I'm hopeful. I liked the um, teaser images that they posted. I thought they looked nice. And they, you know, the fact that we're getting something new from Gamera, that's, I, I find it exciting. Yeah, but the, I think the part that they shouldn't have said is... We're getting this instead of a Shutsuke Kaneko yeah. Gamera reboot, remake, whatever. Yeah, that that was the one big piece of really unfortunate news that stood out when I saw the announcement. I'm like, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love that we're getting something new from Gamera, and it's something that we haven't seen before, an, an anime adaptation. But, you know... She's K Kaneko Gamera 4. I would have not been opposed to that at all. Likewise. And to me, it's like we haven't seen Kaneko do anything in the genre for a while. No. Uh, so it's it's disappointing that here he wanted to do something and he was told no on account of they're making an anime. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, oh... Okay, yeah. I guess. I imagine it'll be released in the spring since it was announced. Mm. Um, it's it's looking like it'll probably be... I mean, the toys come out... So we'll see the, the design no later than April, um, if not earlier, because of the Bandai toy... Um, well, this is rumors at the moment, but the Bandai toy for Gamera's 23 design is April. And then... Two other toys are supposed to come out in June, mm -hmm. so I think I think it'll be around June, June July ish, mm -hmm. the release date. Yeah, now I think that's you, a pretty safe bet. You mentioned two other fake toys, so 
I'm guessing there might be two other monsters. My my money's on Gaios and Guiron. I feel mm. like if, unless they're making new kaiju, they're going to mm. refer back yeah. to those two specifically, I think. Yeah. I mean, the monster A and B definitely has me curious on if it, if, you know, if these are original kaiju that they just don't want to share the name of or if it is returning monsters. Because it could be a... Or it could even be a Shen Godzilla situation. Who knows? Maybe it's only Gamera. <laughs> that would be an interesting concept for them to do. Hmm. I find it unlikely, but you never know, I suppose. Right. I mean, it seems like the big thing right now in animated form is to have multiple different versions of the same character. Like Godzilla in the uh, anime trilogy had his... The Phileas Earth... Scarlet and then the gold one. Hmm. So he had I four mean the gold versions. one that never ended up appearing in the film. This is true. And then Singular Point had, you know, the Aquatus, the ter- Terrestrias and um uh Ultima. Amphibia. Right. And Amphibia, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Maybe maybe they want to do something like that with Gamera. I don't know hmm. how well that would... I mean, they've done that in the past with Advent Gamera, Nightmare Gamera, mm. you know. But oh, I, we, I, we got to sell those toys. Right, exactly. Bandai Bandai wants to make toys. You got to sell toys. That's mm. all that matters. I mean, I think we'll see Gauss one way or another, no matter what. I agree. Like, like if, if these toys are going to be a Gauss or whatever. Yeah, I feel like Gauss is like the guaranteed monster in every Gamera thing. like a- Any Gamera like, reboot, there's going to be a Gauss somewhere. Mm-hmm. Because Even if Gaios, it's like the slightest reference. Right, and Ga- that's because Gauss is like Gamera's Ghidorah. It's literally the only consistently returning character, <laughs> Gaiju. <laughs> Unless we want to count stock footage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then all of them I count because count all of them appear like the same amount. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, say before hey, say movies exist, right? If we're gonna go that route, then Iris and Legion are like the two under sp- unspoken kaiju, even though they're like the most popular. I and mean, Zetas. Yeah. Zetas actually is the most unpopular, I think at least. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because people tend to forget about the Brave, which... Yeah, I know. Is, Criminal. Yeah, it's a travesty, because the Brave is, like, the perfect camera film, in my opinion. It literally is. It's literally the perfect encapsulation of, like, both eras of camera. hmm But earlier we mentioned selling toys. Yes. And that's something Bandai loves to do. Oh. Bandai also loves to produce Ultraman content. Mm. And Tsuburaya definitely has a ton of Ultraman content planned. And not just Ultraman, just Tokusatsu adjacent stuff in general for next year. Oh, definitely. Um, Obviously, we're going to get a new Ultraman series. That's confirmed that we're going to have one until 2028, 2029, like yeah. consecutive. But even then, that's just like the... That's just like the... Short-term goals. Yeah. So, like, they probably are intent on keeping it like this for as long as they can reasonably sustain it. Right. And I'm going to guess that, you know, you had Trigger, which was a Tiga-inspired one, Decker, which was a Dyna. This one would probably end up being Gaia. Oh, it'll almost definitely be Gaia. I I would be shocked if it was anything other than a new-gen Gaia. I'm going to guess Ultraman Geiger. I think I think the name was I think the rumored name was like Ultraman Gazer or something. Gazer, hmm, something like that. I could be wrong. The leak, could, the, the the rumor could be wrong. Who knows? I mean, it's gonna have like, ga- it's gonna have G in the title. Yeah. So in- I'm, and the good thing about uh, this stuff is Subaraya also releases it on YouTube with English subtitles officially. Yes. So we'll probably be able to see it pretty close to real time, uh, hmm. which is going to be great because, you know, Ultraman fans now can enjoy it officially with subs pretty hmm. closely after it gets released. Hmm. But before that comes out, we've, we've still got um, the 
probably the last episode or two of Decca at the very start of the year. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the Decca finale movie. Right, Journey to the, uh, to Beyond, which releases February 23rd, 2023. Yes. Now, what's interesting is they're marketing it as a Super Raya Imagination original. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also going to be a uh, limited release to theaters. And I'm going to guess. I think it's a simultaneous release like HBM, like what HBO Max did with a lot of their films, like GVK. Right. And I'm going like to guess. HBO Max uh, got WB Discoveried. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Warner Brothers' entire plans for literally everything in their catalog. <laughs> uh, these things happen. And I'm also going to guess it's going to get an Ultraman Connections release. I think they did did that with the trigger. Yeah, they they did. did? They they confirmed that there will be an announcement for that at some point in the near future. Um, So it'll probably be like a few weeks after the theatrical or the Japanese release. Mm -hmm. And it's being directed by Meososhi Takesui. I'm probably butchering that yeah uh yeah, if who, anyone's new here we're, we're not exactly uh professionals at the pronunciation game yeah we're not but he uh directed episodes of ultraman orb geed taiga z trigger uh and he was the main director of rmb the rmb movie as well and mm-hmm. then uh trigger episode z and all of Decker, he was the main director, so he has plenty of uh, new gen Ultraman. Was he with Decker? Huh. Hmm? Yeah, was he that's the- that's what I could find in my research. Was he was the main director for for Decker the series? So he he gets to finish his series with the finale. Huh. I thought it was Sakamoto, but I guess I'm just wrong. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Maybe is I'm new? confusing it with Trigger. Maybe. Well, Trigger Episode Z was also directed by him. Huh. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I mean, I'm not caught up with Ultraman. Like I said at the beginning of this, I'm only on mm-hmm. 80. So I still have to watch the rest of 80, Tika Dinagaya, mm-hmm. the side stories, the movies, Cosmos, its three movies, Neos, uh, the next Nexus Max Mebius plus the movies and the side stories, Superior Ultraman Eight Brothers, Ultra Seven X, all the Mega Monster Battle and Ultraman Zero stuff, Neo Ultra Q, and then I think it's isn't it Ginga through R and B, and then I gotta find uh, Taiga Z and Trigger, and then I yeah, can get much. caught up. Mm. So I'm I'm very much behind on my my Ultraman. Mm. I'm in in the case of Decca. Um, is about as we're recording this episode twenty two just came out today. Um, I'm on episode nineteen, so I need to do a little bit of catching up at the moment. You know, I just realized I was like I'm behind on Ultraman. Yet I just like listed off like thirty shows off the top of my head. <laughs> I may have gone what a little a Ultraman crazy. What a nerd! You're the nerd here. Yeah, but, this, I'm, I'm the nerd here, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. You very much are. Mm-hmm. But besides anyway. that, we also have more Ultraman content coming out as Ultraman Season 3 Final will be releasing on Netflix. Yes. Uh, I believe they said spring of 2023. It's going to be the last season of the anime, which is an adaptation of the Ultraman manga. Mind you, it'll this season will be di- diverging greatly from the right. manga, even more than season two did. Which one thing I'm a little curious about is how many episodes it's going to have because episode uh, season two mm. got cut by half. Season right? two was only like six episodes compared to like the I want to say it's either ten 12? or thirteen of the first season. I thought it was twelve. It's it's somewhere around that. Ten to thirteen ish. You could be right, I could be wrong, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm probably right. Uh sure. If that's <laughs> what you want to believe. But yeah, I, I'm kinda disappointed that Netflix, even though uh from what I've read, the Ultraman anime has done really well, mm. they just kind of seem to not care about it. I don't know. It's it it is a shame. I mean I thought it was a shame that Pacific Rim the black ended at two seasons because it felt like that should have been 
that should have had a third season. I felt. Yeah, I, I mean, Netflix has been really weird with its with its stuff. I mean, yeah, where's Singular Point season two, man? I mean, there's been rumors <laughs> of that, but rumors, yes, thing- but. At the moment, nothing's been truly substantiated yet with that. Right, and both of us expected to see something about that at Godzilla Day, but... And then there was nothing, nothing, so, you know. So, I mean, maybe they're going to take a while on making it like they did for the first season, but hopefully it's not a long time. Please, someday, I want to know what will happen next. Right. (laughs) But... That's not the only thing that Tsuburai is animating this this year because we are also seeing the release of Gridman Universe, the highly anticipated yes. – it's it's the conclusion, right? It's the conclusion to this – Yeah, to my knowledge, it should be. They haven't announced uh, any other plans for continuations afterwards, so – Right. Now, Gridman Universe is a – it's the third in this reboot? to the Gridman Sequel. franchise? I, I won't say how, but they're not reboots. <laughs> okay. We'll just say that then. Uh, it's being directed by Akira Anamiya, who mm. has worked on both of the shows, SSSS Gridman and SSSS Dinozenon, if I'm correct. I believe he was the main director of both. I think he was too. It's and currently slated. this short film? I could be wrong on the short film. I don't remember. There was a short film? Yeah. So, you know um, how Hideaki Anno did like... Um, so he did like um, a tokusatsu... I think it was... Evangelion. Um, that he did. Um, and he got like a ton of like anime creators and things and people like that to do short films. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like that Ultraman vs. Jackal uh, short film? Not off the top of my head. Oh, they they put it on the um, Subaraya YouTube channel not too long ago. It's it's like an anime adaptation of like a of like a manga. It's only mm-hmm. like six minutes long. Um. So yeah, uh, the SSSS Gridman and series came about because of a Gridman short film that was submitted to this event that featured um, the uh, scrapped character Gridman Sigma who was supposed to appear in the original series. Huh. Interesting. I'm surprised you didn't know that. (laughs) I I haven't dove too much into the Gridman stuff, admittedly. Uh, Even still, I'm I'm, I'm disappointed in you, man. How could you not know this? Oh, I'm sorry, man. You're like like the the kaiju expert. You're the nerd here. You're the nerd. We already established that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 i'm the nerd mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyways um uh, but it's being released march 24th gridman yeah. universes but prior and, to that oh go ahead uh, well you're gonna say the thing i'm gonna say anyways what was i gonna say well you were gonna talk about how sssss gridman and sssss dinosenum are receiving uh recap films uh in advance to the release of Gridman Universe. I was in, in kind of a promotional uh, gimmick. They're going to release Gridman January 20th and Dino Zenon March 10th mm. to uh, promote and get people interested in, in Gridman Universe, mm-hmm. which is going to be released by Crunchyroll, if I remember correctly, in the States, uh, dubbed and subbed a few months after, I feel like. I mean, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Potato Potato. Uh, aren't they the same now? Uh, Funimation bought Crunchyroll, and they took away the Funimation name and renamed it Crunchyroll. Hmm. And then I Crunchyroll see. brought uh, bought Right Stuff Anime, which will be a relevant topic uh, much later <laughs> down in this episode. So that's exciting. Uh, there's a lot of anime. Like we have Gamma Rebirth, Ultraman Season 3, Gridman Universe, and the two compilation films. So there's yeah. a lot of anime uh, tokusatsu adjacent stuff coming out this yeah. this coming year. And Gridman uh, Universe is going to be the best of them. I'm sorry. It's, it's just inevitable. I'm not going to disagree. I, I haven't seen it. But I've heard a lot of good stuff about SSSS Gridman. Uh, I loved I, Dino Zenon. Is that I, one really good too? Yes, yes, just as good, if not better. 
I do need to rewatch SSSS Gridman. Um, but Dinosenum just when 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 the reason for why the plot is structured the way it is clicked with me. I, I went from really enjoying to show, the show to absolutely adoring it. Like huh. when those themes clicked, they clicked and I loved it. Well, my plan is once I finish Ultraman, like all of it, I'm going to watch Gridman and then uh, SS, SS Gridman and then mm-hmm. SS, SS Dino Zenon. And maybe around that time I can get Gridman Universe and watch it. So I'll be able to watch it all kind of back to back to back to back, hopefully. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance for the subtitles on uh, uh, the original Gridman. So good. I I know Mill Creek is not up to par, <laughs> but Subaru has got a lot of content coming out next year. I mean, that's pretty typical. Oh, yeah. I mean, outside of this, we outside of what we've already mentioned, we've also got um, a spinoff of the Ultra Galaxy Fight series. Um, starring the newly introduced Ultraman Regulus. Yeah, and you were telling me about this uh, before the recording. So it's a miniseries, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it's for Superaya Imagination, I want to say, or, or at least that's the intention. It'll probably get like uh, a Western release in some form. Um, but... Yeah, Ultraman Regulus is a new miniseries starring the titular hero that'll be, you know, explaining explaining his origin. Um, yeah, and it'll feature a whole slew of new aliens from this uh, into the uh, Ultra Universe. Is that what it's called, Ultra Series Universe? I don't, I don't know, multiverse, what have you? The Ultraverse. Ultraverse, yes, into the Ultraverse. Um, Ultraman into the Ultraverse. Oh yeah, that's another thing animated. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Or this two. is true. Because uh, cause Japanese Spider-Man and Lepardon, hopefully. Hopefully, um, if not in this one, the third one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, there, and for Ultraman Regulus, there will also be a special episode serving as a uh, sequel to a more direct continuation of Ultra Galaxy Fight the Destin Crossroad um, called Ultraman Regulos First Mission. It is an 18-minute special that will feature um, the appearance of a lot, the reappearance of a lot of the more obscure Subaraya Ultraman characters. Um, so powered and, and great. Yep, it'll... Yep, oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it'll have... Andrew Melos, um, Ultraman Reboot, and pretty much all the other like foreign Ultraman, like um, S- Ultraman Scott, Ultra- Ultraman Chuck, um, Ultra Woman Beth, uh, and Powered and Great, you know? Really? That's that's yeah. awesome. Because yeah. I know for a while, Subaraya was kind of just not acknowledging them. Well, they recently appeared in the, the Destin Crossroads, so that's... So that's why they now have suits for them. Um, Interesting. Because all these characters appear in the Ultra Galaxy Fight um, uh, web series. Now in tokusatsu form. Yes, yes. Yeah, for the animated uh, free, yeah. Wait, is uh, Jonius also included? Um, Jonius doesn't appear to be in this, but he was in the he has been in the Ultra Galaxy Fight series as yes. Interesting. And, okay. And he was in the Mega Monster Battle movie. He was? Yeah. I mean so are powered and great. I'm learning so much. <laughs> yeah, they they all they all make cameos in that movie fighting Ultraman Belial at the beginning. Hmm. Okay. But like Ultra Galaxy Fight was um the the um, absolute conspiracy made for the um, first reappearance of Andrew Melos in years, and also I think it was the first Ultra Galaxy fight that featured the live action debut of Malaysia's Ultraman uh, reboot. Hmm, I'm learning so much today about foreign Ultraman. <laughs> 
And if you want to learn more, watch Ultra Galaxy Fight on YouTube. <laughs> now you're the one marketing and being the promoter. Yeah, but now I'm pr- promoting the actual companies and being nice to them. It's almost out of character for me, I swear. Mm-hmm. It is. Especially when some of these companies are not very nice about distribution. I mean, hey, at least this isn't Toho. I mean, sometimes Toho's better than some other companies. What, like Toei? I, yeah, Toei's kind of rough. Yeah, that's stiff competition. Speaking of Toei, uh, we have, we've gotten a few announcements recently for uh, some new V Cinema um, sort of anniversary celebrations for some previous Toei, uh, or some previous Sentai series, I should say. Right, yeah, you've got, is it Ninpu Sentai Hurricaneer? Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. It is and getting I'm... its 20th anniversary um, V Cinema film, which is, it's, that's kind of like, it's not quite direct to video, but it's more like limited release, you know? Right. I mean, Hikider was a V Cinema, V Cinema has been around for a long time. Like Hikider yeah. was one, uh, Zio was one, J was one. That's uh, right. They were too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Now this one's being directed directed by Katsuya Watanabe, who's been directing Sentai from Zoo Ranger all the way up to uh, Cure Major, I believe. Yeah, but um, interestingly enough, this one is also featuring um, the not just uh, the Rangers from Hurricane Joe. It's also featuring uh, a couple of the Rangers from Go Ranger as well, which I found interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can't I, say I'm terribly familiar with either because, admittedly, my only experience with Sentai is Zhu Ranger at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you you have more experience than I have with uh, Sentai because I haven't. But I still need to change my ways and indulge myself more in it. Like the closest thing the Sentai I've gotten into is the 2017 Power Rangers movie, which is like the farthest you can get without saying that you haven't watched any Sentai. <laughs> like it's not the Power Rangers adaptations. It's like the CGI remake of the adaptation. I mean, hey, at least they had at least they had a couple scenes, maybe one scene with suits. Thanks for giving me that, Rex. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's the only bone you'll get. Dang. But, no, we we actually have quite a bit of uh, Sentai coming out this year. Uh, yeah, besides I mean, there's that, still stuff to come out from uh, this current year, 2022, because you've got, like, the Hurricane... Uh, uh, versus uh, Dawn Brothers. Dawn Brothers mm-hmm. uh, collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you also have an Abba Ranger film you were telling me. Yes. Bakuryu Sentai Abba Ranger 20th Yurus, Yurusarezeru Abare. I definitely butchered that pronunciation, but I'm not going to try again. <laughs> yeah, so that is slated for a... Technically, its full release on video is 2024 in March of that year but it'll be getting a limited release in theaters sometime probably mid to late 2023. So, yeah, that's cool because it's it's uh, not only is it reuniting all of the uh, original cast of Ar- Arbor Ranger, but it's even uh, one or two of the cast members, I believe, actually quit acting years ago. And so this is their first return to acting in like, two decades you know oh that's that's actually really cool yeah because i mean you hear that a lot i feel like with tokusatsu that actors retire and then they'll come back like out of the blue like somebody went searching for them but oh and another ring connect another ring reference today this uh this uh v cinema will be the directorial debut at toei for hisashi kimura whom directed the recently released Sadako DX. 
Just had to bring Ring back into it. I'm didn't sorry. You? I'm sorry. It's no, it's, you're it's, not. It's no, you're it's not. It's like a tick. <laughs> <laughs> ring, 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 ring. I got to do. I'm ring. sorry, man. I, I just it, it it's it's infected my mind like a virus. Wink, wink. I'm not going to respond anymore. <laughs> Uh, I actually wanted to point out uh, that the Hurricane Your 20th Anniversary V Cinema is being released to physical on October 25th of 2023. Mm. So that's still got a long ways to go. But yeah. while waiting, we I mean, do. The, the premiere is at least um, slated for sometime early next year. <laughs> right. But while waiting, we also still have Dawn Brothers, which is airing still. Yeah. But then, when that'll end, probably sometime around March, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's March. Um, we will be getting the Osama Sentai King Og- Og- Oger. 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 Again, with our pronunciations being truly great. Ah, it's oh. Oger. Oger. Hey, I you was going to say, I'm going right. to do. You were more right. Thank you so much. God damn it, I gave you another bone. <laughs> Yeah, it's the 47th uh, season of Super Sentai, which is – that's crazy. That is – that's a lot. Th- that's a huge amount. And, uh, and I've only completed one. Oh, I haven't oh even boy. started one. <laughs> well, that's your problem. Yeah. But I've heard that it might be based around bugs, kind of a, in honor of Metal Hero's 40th anniversary. Uh, huh. They're going to try I, and I do a bug. I remember seeing um, the silhouette – for the designs, because you know, l- before before um, any like before the show comes out, they you get like the the trademarks. Um, so that's how we got the name of the series. But then um, magazines, like Japanese magazines, will show little snippets of the designs. There'll be some real leaks, some fake leaks, you know, that sort of uh, stuff. Um, so I remember seeing like. These designs will have uh, capes, I believe. Hmm. I feel like I heard that somewhere too, yeah. Yeah. So not much is really known about the show besides what Rex just mentioned. But, yeah. you know, it's Sentai, so you know there will be kaiju. So you're going to mm-hmm. get that double goodness. And if they're honoring Metal Heroes that way, at least they're honoring it, even though they still won't do, like, a new adaptation, mm-hmm. even though there was supposed to be a Gavin uh, foreign adaptation years back that wasn't got it just canceled. beyond? Oh, that's right. It was just beyond. It was a just yeah, beyond from just Brazil. Beyond pretty yeah, pretty popular in Brazil. Um, I still need to watch Just Beyond. I have the SD Blu-ray from Discotech, but I haven't touched it. Hmm. Um. Who knows? Maybe, maybe some uh, Metal Heroes characters will make some cameos, or oh, maybe they'll have a cro- another crossover movie. They could. That'd be Since awesome. That seems to be the only thing that Metal Heroes gets to appear in nowadays from Toei. Right. The occasional crossover here and there. Right. Speaking of crossing over, um, across the ocean in America, Hasbro <laughs> is adapting both Rio Soldier and Cure Ranger into Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, uh, the 30th yes. season of Power Rangers. So between Sentai and Power Rangers, there's over 70 seasons. <laughs> what a what a daunting uh, couple of franchises, i got to say. Yeah, but the good thing about Cosmic Fury is it's only 10 episodes. Um, mm-hmm. It's a direct sequel to Dino Fury, and it's actually – I think I read it's the first time that a – because Dino Fury had two seasons itself – uh, yeah. This is the first time since the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that you've had a reoccurring cast for three seasons. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because I think most of the last like one to two, like I know Samurai had like there was the there was Power Rangers Samurai and then Super Samurai. Right, you had uh, Samurai Super Samurai Mega Force Super Mega Force uh, yeah, Ninja Steel yeah. Steel Super Ninja Steel Dino Fury. Uh, Super Dino Fury. Um, there's uh, there's like two more. Yeah. But if you want to hear uh, educated people talk about Power Rangers, I definitely recommend checking out 
The Power Trip, a Power Rangers podcast hosted by our friends uh, Nathan Marchand and Michael Hamilton, where they talk about each series or each season of Power Rangers and each movie. Uh, Mm. They do a great job at it. By the end of all this promotion, we're going to lose all our viewership. Yeah, they're all going to start watching this tokusatsu and listening to all this other stuff. They're not going to have enough time for us anymore, I swear. Just like how we don't have enough time to watch Super Sentai and Power Rangers. Oh, it's an endless cycle. I swear. Oh my god. This is going to be your new shtick. Just everything's ring. Oh god damn it, I was trying not to say it. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I, it was on my mind. I was trying not to say it, but you had to be the one to bring it up this time. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to the, the Power Rangers thing, uh, Cosmic Fury is going to be released on Netflix. This is the mm-hmm. second season to be distributed through Netflix. Again, Netflix is taking over the tokusatsu and kaiju. Oh, another thing. I, I almost forgot that they had Power Rangers yeah, because of their deal with Hasbro. And this is Hasbro's third production. Um, they did yeah. Ninja. Uh, no, they did Dino Fury seasons one and two. And now they're doing Cosmic Fury, yeah. I think. And they they co-produced, what's it? Beast? Beast Morphers? Beast Morphers, Beast. I wanted to say Beast Machines, sure. but that's I'm pretty sure it's for Beast Morphers. Like they they did like the second half of that second season. Like that's when uh, they were uh, Hasbro purchased it from Saban. Mm-hmm. And you know they've been hinting at Hasbro no longer adapting Sentai, so. I think people are still happy to see that's happening, but I've also heard yeah. that this might be one of the last seasons where they do this. Um, mm. But we'll keep seeing. I've also heard that they're just going to start paying Toei for the suits and they're just going to start filming everything themselves. Um, mm. From my knowledge, the way they're doing Cosmic Fury is they're just reusing the suits and the only things that are tokusatsu technically are the Zords and the, the you know, the kaiju stuff, the mechs and the kaiju stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, from what I understand, they still have a lot of the same, um, a lot of the same, like, I'm sure they have actual Toei staff doing, like, some of the actual action choreography for Power Rangers itself. Right. I'm pretty sure Koichi Sakamoto who directs a lot of Sentai, Ultraman, and all that, and got his start in Tokusatsu through Power Rangers. I'm pretty sure he worked on Cosmic Fury, I want to say. I could have sworn there was a post by him about it. Right. Maybe. I don't I don't know. But Someone uh, will have to fact check me here. Right, right. Michael's going to be listening, and he's going to be messaging me. <laughs> you missed, You didn't say this right. This is the info. And I'll be like, yes, Michael, you are the Power Rangers expert. I'm aware. <laughs> I actually, I'm the reason. You as a soy boy meme. <laughs> <laughs> actually, where I got all this info was through Michael. I called Michael and I was like, hey, so I'm doing a podcast and I'm writing an article for Kaiju Roman Media. Definitely check that out as well when that publishes. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and okay. I was like, you need to tell me all the Sentai and Power Rangers stuff coming out. And then he just started listing this stuff off. And the, the last one he listed off that was Power Rangers was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always, which this is the 30th season of Power Rangers. That's because for the last 30 years, Power Rangers has existed. So I'm pretty sure it's a 30th anniversary special. It is. It's the 30th anniversary of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always is the 30th anniversary special. It's a Hasbro mm. production. It's going to bring back uh, actors from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Unfortunately, yeah. one of the re, uh, cast members will not be returning, which is... I mean, a few won't be because, unfortunately, a f- fair few of them have passed away. Mm-hmm. And most recently, we had Jason David Frank pass away, mm. uh, who, who was himself... the Green Ranger. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not just the Green Ranger, but was Tommy o- Oliver, one of the most recurring characters if not the most returning characters in the franchise right and 
to uh, while we're bringing up him, I think it wouldn't be right if we didn't mention his upcoming film, Legend of the White Dragon, which is not Tokusatsu, but you'd be crazy to say that it wasn't inspired by his work on Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still it's it's still using suits anyway, so mm-hmm. not technically Tokusatsu if you're going to be like it has to be Japanese, but. You know, same sort of similar wavelength, you know. Right. And I've heard some people say that they were thinking about not finishing it, but everybody on the crew is saying, like, we're going to finish this in honor of him. Yeah. Um, Which is, it's going to be great. And I've heard that Lionsgate is involved, I believe, um, and that they hopefully will release that. And it would be great if it got a theatrical release, especially. Yeah. So definitely look out for that. That's like an honorable mention, Legend of the White Dragon. It's in post-production right now. So yeah. it will be the last project that uh, Jason David Frank worked on before his unfortunate passing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Aside from those, however, Toei is, of course, working on Common their – Rider. Their their golden child, Common Rider. Hmm. Geeks uh, is still airing at the moment, and that'll continue until about. I want to say it's like when's it? Like September is when they usually start airing the new series. Probably it's somewhere yeah. around that. It's it's mid to late next year. Right. So you know we're gonna have Geeks, and then there will always be another common writer show just like Ultraman. Yeah. So there's just an like upcoming, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, a, there's an upcoming untitled common writer uh, show. And yeah, give before it about that, four or five months until we get uh, the trademark leak to trademarks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you mentioned before there will be a summer movie that uh, yeah. will introduce we'll probably, the, uh, it'll, It'll have, it'll probably be about Geats and then it'll introduce um it'll introduce the uh new writers. Or maybe that'll or maybe that'll be earlier. Whatever. There'll there'll still be a, a summer movie and there might be something a little bit before or a little bit after that. I mean, even if and, they didn't do a summer movie, we still have a common writer movie coming out uh this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, which is weird because when it was announced, it felt so far away. But now we're here, and it's like, whoa! It's it's only like what three and three or so months away. Mm-hmm. And of course, the film we're talking about is Hideaki Anno's Shin Kamen Rider, mm-hmm. a film that I personally am very excited for. I'm I'm intrigued because it it looks like a low budget film, even though it's mm. like one of Toei's flagship films for next year. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, like in comparison to Shin Ultraman and particularly Shin Godzilla, it definitely the look and feel of it is a lot more low budget, but also in a way that's probably true spiritual, spiritually true to how you know the relationship between Godzilla, Ultraman, and the original Kamen Rider was. You could say, mm-hmm. and. I'm just going to say this because this is the only thing that's like really exciting to me, but that's because I, I haven't, I haven't watched any common writer to like really get excited, but, uh, Shinya oh, Tezukamoto yeah. is appearing in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> dude, that's, I am so excited because of that. Like he was in Shin Godzilla. I don't My favorite think, man. Yeah. Our favorite Tao man. I don't think he was in Shin Ultraman. Unfortunately, no, he isn't. Oh, sadly. Oh, but the fact that he's in Shin Kamen Rider and he's a main character, I think. He's either what? a main character or a main antagonist. It seems. It, it looks mean, like he's. It looks like he's at the very least in cahoots with Shocker. Right. Um, so I mean, anything with Tezukamoto, I'm like, yes. When I saw him <laughs> in the trailer, I was like, wait, hold on, stop the <laughs> tape, stop the tape, rewind. <laughs> And I was like, is that, did I just see Shinya Tezukamoto? And I was like, oh, it is yeah. him. Yes, yes. I Anything with Tezukamoto, I'm already like, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm just really excited because 
Yeah, it's. I, I'm just excited to see what Anna will do with um, the original Kamen Rider story, and I'm curious how this will contrast to 2005's Kamen Rider the First. Right, because that was a remake of the original as well, was yeah, it not? Yeah, yeah. Except that one was probably that one was. It's very much a product of the 2000s in its gritty nature and downright edginess at times. I you could argue. So it's the um, Godzilla Final Wars of the Common Rider franchise. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as insane, but it has its moments like that. Um, this the, its sequel is a straight up J horror. Hmm. Um, which is apparently not liked by most of the common writer community, but as poorly written as it is, it was pretty enjoyable. <laughs> see, that's um, one thing I'm interested to see how Shin Common Writer uh, uses his common writer's horror? yeah horror background. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm. Yeah, I'm very curious how it'll. I'm very curious how Shin Common Writer will turn out. One interesting thing is so far the the two Shin the other two Shin movies um in the Anno work specifically Shin Godzilla took Godzilla back to his original idea um being like th- this you know mindless brute uh, yeah. and Shin Ultraman took it back to the original envisionment whereas yeah. Shin Kamen Rider does not appear to be following in Shin uh Shotaru is Shinomori's original visions and concept. I mean, yeah, because then we would have gotten Skull Man. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to my understanding, Shin, uh, Kamen Rider Shin Prologue is the closest to at least execution with the Kamen Rider to the original idea. Mm. Or I've heard Common Writer Black Sun as well has been uh, pretty close to what Inshinomori wanted. Mm. Where, oh, Black Sun was so good. Whereas Shin Common Writer seems to just go back to the original Common Writer. Mm-hmm. But now he's got a trench coat. Right. That that <laughs> that's that's all the I difference. I love that trench coat. I love that trench coat. No, the film has an interesting look to it that has piqued my interest, especially because Common Rider in from what I can tell, minus Black Sun is very toyetic. It's very yeah, and it's very modern and it looks very cheaply made mm-hmm. with its usage of CGI and whatnot. Whereas yeah. uh, both Black Sun and Shin Common Rider seem to be the outliers staying true to that I mean, Tokusatsu. Let's be honest. Probably the reason that it's not all is that Common Rider is an actual Toku character in this movie is because Arno took one look at Toei CG department and was like, "No, no, <laughs> no." <laughs> Probably, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably see some minor CG enhancements here and there, but you know. Mm-hmm. But like, even their uh, Spider Man in the is he called Spider Man? I know in the episode of Man the original Spider Man, you know, potato, potato. Uh, he like looks ridiculous, but mm-hmm. it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love this new um, Spider-Man design, Man Spider, whatever. <laughs> and there's no CGI enhancements. It's all, yeah, it's all. I, I love that design. Um, the what they've, I really like the mask for the Wasp Woman that they've shown. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting how um, the um, Man Bat, um, who I suspect will, might could end up being Sukamoto's character. Or- <gasps> Or maybe not. I, I can see Sukamoto either being an integral, like, either a shocker scientist or he's man bat. One or the other. That's what I see it being. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I find it interesting how he looks more like, less like a cyborg and more like some sort of, like, genetic mutation or modifications of sorts. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm maybe- curious to see where it'll go. Maybe they'll, they're taking a little bit of inspiration from uh, Kamen Rider Black as well. 
I mean, you Maybe. know, Ono could be blending a little bit of all of his favorite stuff. Mm. Maybe. So, I mean, I'm excited. And from what I've heard, Shin Kamen Rider will be getting a U.S. Western release. Oh. Uh, because when they were promoting uh, – they were promoting uh, Kamen Rider Futo P.I., Mm-hmm. Uh, they also were promoting Black Sun and Shin Kamen Rider, uh, Funimation mm-hmm. Crunchyroll was, and Futo P.I. got a Crunchyroll release. Mm-hmm. Black Sun's got an Amazon release. Mm-hmm. So it which seems... Which everyone watching should watch. Mm-hmm. Which, so it seems Very like Shin Kamen Rider's also going to get one, and it seems like Toei's flagship yeah. for the franchise. Mm. So... I mean, it is the big 50th anniversary uh, celebration project. That's right. It, it is uh, Common Writer's anniversary. Speci- well, it was this year, technically, right? No, or it was last year. It was actually um, the year they announced all three projects, 2021. Gotcha. Because Common Writer started airing in um, 71. Uh, 71. Although it might have ended in 73. Yeah, it did because it was uh and it's 98 episodes long, so it actually maybe it is fitting. Huh. So I didn't actually think about that before now. And yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, February uh February tenth of twenty twenty uh of nineteen seventy three was when it ended. And then they did uh V three following that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I'm curious to see if they'll do uh, any sequels because I know there's rumors of like Shin Ultraman 2 and Shin Ultraman 3. Um, mm-hmm. There was a pitch for Shin Godzilla 2, but Toho didn't want to do that. So I'm curious if Ana you will. Have will... The instead, you know? Exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm curious to see if there will be a Shin Kamen Rider V3. Hmm. Or you know Shin Kamen Rider. I think we could turn that into a into a modern J horror. <laughs> I'm down. Um, Bro, make uh, to make Tsukamoto direct it. Oh my god, that well, we, need a, we need a Tsukamoto directed Kamen Rider movie. That would be awesome. And it's that like would actually be oh, really wait. fitting. Yeah, because his his Tetsu the Iron Man is kind of what uh, Shitaro in Shinomori wanted. With how hmm. painful the transition was and like how yeah violent so honestly, and dark it was. Honestly, I was suggesting that as a joke, but actually, I kind of like that idea. Mm-hmm. Or like having to a, a Keita Anamiya V Cinema style, like please, yes. Ooh, and it's Common Writer. We need more. We need more gritty Common Writer reboots. I'm. I loved Black Sun. I loved Zeto. I loved. Um, I even loved Kamen Rider the first, you know. I'm down for more of this. I mean, I from what I've seen, I Amazon as well. Can't forget that, my baby. <laughs> Isn't there an <laughs> Amazon sequel coming out? Um, I mean, there was season two and then a movie that came out. Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, speaking of dark and gritty, um. That's all I had for Toei, unless you had anything else. Yeah, no, that was that was about it. Um, um, yeah. When you mentioned Dark and Gritty, that reminded me of an independent uh, Kaiju Tokusatsu project that was announced a few years back um, that was uh, crowdfunded. Uh, does it happen to relate to Keizo Murase? It does. Uh, his directorial oh. debut film, uh, Brush of the God... Featuring <laughs> cinematography by Daisuke Sato, director of Howl from Beyond the Fog. Mm. I think um, you and I are both very, very much looking forward to this project. Yeah, I'm really interested. Like, I will say it's kind of concerning because they were doing updates and like footage, and then it's just been silent. I mean, there was recently an update from uh, Matt Frank, I believe, was on set and got to see like the Orochi. Um, puppet. So it's the it's amazing Orochi puppet. Oh, it looks. You're right. Amazing is is a great word to describe it. It is wonderful. And I, I mean, I thought it was supposed to come out this year, so I was a little disappointed that it didn't. I'm um, pretty sure it's been. 
I could have sworn it was slated for 23, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm I, I could have missed something. But the fact that they've spent like two or three years working on it, like this has got to be like. I mean, they spent a while on How From Beyond the Fog, if I remember right. Yeah, that started in 2015, if I remember correctly, and it came out in 2019. So that was a four year. Yeah. Uh, but that was only like 23 minutes. So this one's supposed to be, 35. I think, an hour. 35? Okay. This one's yeah. supposed to be double that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. So we'll see. And, you know, Sato's been working on other projects, which I will will mention uh, yeah. one of them that's coming up here uh, hmm. in a little bit. But I'm excited to see what happens with uh, Brush of the God. I know SRS Cinema's interested in releasing it as well. So that would be exciting to see uh, the return of Orochi, uh, the mythical dragon from Japanese mythology who has appeared in a few Toho films, Mm -hmm. who is referenced in uh, legendary pictures, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Mm -hmm. Uh, And was uh, one of the inspirations for the legendary King Ghidorah. Right. Legendary as in legendary to us. (laughs) Not, not, not that, um, not that uh, production company that made uh, mediocre Godzilla movies. Yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah, I'm excited for Bush of the Gods. Honestly, I think it's it's my most anticipated independent produced uh, kaiju film. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, Keiza Murase directing it. It's it's his directorial debut, but also his like last big project i think Mm -hmm. and what's really nice is he had the idea for this film back when he was making mighty peking man and so the Mm -hmm. fact that now he's able to do it and direct it is really awesome to see i'm very excited for this passion project Mm -hmm. speaking of passion projects another one that got brought back from the dead uh jellyfish eyes 2 maha shankaha I butchered that. Um, So for those who don't know, in 2013, a film was released titled Jellyfish Eyes from director Takashi Murakani. It was supposed to be this really artistic, exciting film. It came out. uh, It was met with horrible reviews. People didn't like it. They called it a Pokemon knockoff. It features uh, basically Pokemon and, and Kaiju. Uh, It was in response to the Fukushima disaster. And at the end of the film, there was a stinger for a sequel. Mm -hmm. The sequel is being worked on by this. It's an independent company. Uh, They had been working on the sequel. And up until 2022 or up until 2020, when COVID-19 hit, uh, they had been hyping up this film, but in 2020, when COVID hit, to keep the company from going bankrupt, they had to cancel the production. They shared some footage from it. It looks great. Uh, the The CGI looked amazing, but mm-hmm. they had to cancel it. However, in early 2022, he made a post saying, we are starting production again and showed off some uh, CGI from the film. Mm-hmm. It looked great. Um, it looks kind of inspired by Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi's giant god warrior text Tokyo with the designs, um, while sharing a similar, I would say, color palette to like Shin Ultraman. And I don't know when it's coming out, but considering they've already been working on the film for years, surely it's got to be getting close to completion. I see. Probably late 2023, early 24 at latest, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, But this one's going to have more giant monsters in it, so that's going to be exciting. Um, And I just hope that people continue to – that the film gets more promotion and maybe more people show interest in it. Because as of lately, there's been a lot more interest in doing uh, kaiju films. So – at least that's my hope. Hmm. I, I still need to watch Jellyfish Eyes sometime. Yeah, I originally they were going to do uh, Tokusatsu special effects, men in suits and whatnot, but they opted out to do CGI, um, which was kind of disappointing. Um, 
especially since tokusatsu effects are few and far between now. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, even with some of the films on this list, like Godzilla Zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with with the uh, success Shin Godzilla was, we don't really see any more tokusatsu giant monster men in suit action films. I mean, we still get like you still get your Ultraman, but and Sentai, I suppose. But you know, with for recent Shin Ultraman, even we're starting to see a, even a shift away from that in modern Ultraman. So who knows what will happen to Sentai? I've I've seen from um, Dawn Brothers that Toei CGI seems to appear to be improving. Well, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> the mech CGI yeah. has been improving. The other stuff, uh, maybe not so much. But, you know. This is very true. I- I'll have to look into that jellyfish eyes too, though, because I don't think I've actually seen the footage from that. I'll send you a link. It's on Instagram. It actually looks really cool. Okay. Yeah, if we're, if we're looking for actual, you know, true tokusatsu effects, and look no further than Takeshi Yagi, who recently released a short film for um, his current tokusatsu project, Akari, um, mm-hmm. which, is, which is a sort of... He has directed various Ultraman... Um, projects uh specifically Did he, pardon didn't he work on the next to nexus i believe so he also worked on max and a few others he's even done some godzilla documentaries i believe um like i think he did the godzilla and heroin documentary uh heroin uh, as in heroin <laughs> no <laughs> I, was, I was like uh what huh <laughs> it hey its Japanese title is Godzilla to Heroin, which is Godzilla and Heroin. So, you know. I see. <laughs> yeah, now that that's like a college film, correct? Uh, Akari? Yeah. Um, so what it is, so it's an Ultraman-esque project where you've got a kaiju attacking a city and then a giant being fighting to defend the city from it, you know. A Sajin. Yeah, sure. K- uh, killed I hero. Potato, potato. Shut up. Yeah, so for this project, Takashi Yagi will be actually holding a, um online course for the production of it to teach, um, you know, how to make tokusatsu. It's, it's a part of this, not quite school, but like this sort of online brand that sort of teach. It's got like a fair few courses on different aspects of Japanese culture. And this one Mm -hmm. that Takeshi Yagi is doing is on filmmaking and specifically. Hmm. It kind of reminds me of when Kazuo Mori uh, had Koichi Kawakita uh, help him teach a class on tokusatsu effects back in the late 2000s. And it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was a mini series. Uh, I want to say it was like called Gunbuster, but I feel like I'm wrong with that title. Yeah, Gunbuster. I'm pretty sure that's an. I'm pretty sure that's an Ano anime. Because it was. Because uh, Kawakita was the director of effects for it, mm. and it was a. It was like a. a class on Tokusatsu. It was Gunbot. Gunbot's what it's called. Ah. It was four episodes. Um, and it was uh it was kind of a just quite simply a lesson on how to make tokusatsu and it was giant mechs and whatnot and it kind of reminds me of that mm-hmm. um speaking of this akari film isn't matt frank didn't he do the monster designs for it um he either did the it was either the i don't think he did the monster design but i think he designed um the hero character, who I think might be the titular Akari. I could be wrong. Akari might be the monster. I I don't remember. (laughs) Yeah, I thought the film had already came out, but you informed me that it was just like a promotional... Proof of concept short. That's about six minutes long. So, And it's really stylized, if I remember correctly. Like, the lighting is... Yeah, the lighting. It's 
Yeah, it's sort of similar to like the lighting in GVK's fight in a way. But it looks better because it's not computer graphics. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of stylized, what you just talked about, Akari, kind of reminded me of another uh, college production, which was Midnight the Era, which is a Mm. tokusatsu anime hybrid short film. Yeah. That's coming to uh, the comedic comic convention in 2023 mm-hmm. uh it's got a kaiju a men in suit kaiju combined with anime mm. um it's being done by college students it's not necessarily a class but you know they have college students do it to learn how to do to- uh filmmaking um so it kind of reminded me of that i'm kind of excited to see what comes of this because mm. this it's an interesting combination I mean, that hasn't been done since like um the dinosaur trilogy from Subaraya. Mm-hmm. And even then that was just the people that were animated. The rest was tokusatsu. This time it's the yeah. opposite. The kaiju is tokusatsu and everything else I believe is anime. Hmm. So it's, it's interesting to see the, the difference, the, the, the flip side of, of that style. Hmm. Yeah. I'm interested to see that. Cause was it a tr- was it a trailer they released for, like a teaser trailer? Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember seeing that and thinking, huh, oh, interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because it's anime, it's very stylized, um, which I think will help it. Um, I hope it gets a release. I mean, clearly, since they're using anime and Tokusatsu as, you know, probably going to hopefully try to play to the strengths of both mediums. And, Hopefully, yeah. And present a unique visual experience because, mind you, I've only seen one episode of Eisenberg, but from what I've heard from other people is that the, the, that Eisenberg um, doesn't really use its medium to full advantage, mm-hmm. or its mediums, I should say. Right. Now, one unfortunate thing about uh, Midnight the Era is... It's going to be released on DVD at this convention. They're not putting it on YouTube. Oh. So, like, I don't know if we'll be able to see it because I know there's some of these, like, college products that uh, are in, like, licensing hell. Hmm. So, like, you can't license it at all. Like, the, the licensors aren't aren't willing to work with you. There's a few that I know SRS has tried to get I can't think off the top of my head what they are, but because of the fact that it's a uh, college, they're harder to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and their deals are different than companies, and they're not individuals that are you know willing to, to negotiate. So it's actually more difficult to release stuff that's uh, like class work and whatnot. I see. Um, there was uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. There was one who one director who did a lot of like kaiju short films, but because he did them for a college, the college owns the rights hmm. and the college isn't working on like with SRS to release them. So this might have that same problem at the end of the day. Damn. Um That's which a shame. is it is, especially because, like, there is a market for this stuff. Yeah, no, the market's been growing. So much so that there's even, uh, like, Brush the Gods that's crowdfunded by people internationally. Mm. And actually, another film that uh, has was crowd, crowdfunded and actually beat its, like, goal, like, three times over within the day it was announced was the upcoming 3Y kaiju film. Uh, 3Y did... The Great Buddha Arrival, Nezera 1964, yeah. uh, titled Hoshi 35. Yep. But unlike Nezera and Buddha, this one isn't a reboot, a remake, or a documentary on, on a, a past kaiju film. Or, um, unfinished kaiju film. Right. It, this time it's an entirely original one uh, directed by Nezera and Buddha director uh, Hiroto Yokokawa. Um, but also, it's being co-directed by Kazuma Yongyamar. I, mm. I, my handwriting is horrible, so I can't <laughs> tell what I have here in my notes. But uh, 
Daisuke Sato also is a co-director. I bet he uh, primarily is working on the effects side Probably. of the production. Um, much like how they credited Higuchi and Ano as co-directors, and Higuchi's the one that did the the kaiju stuff, and yeah. Ano did the human stuff. I think mean, Higuchi was um, um, pretty active on set for um, the drama stuff as well, I believe, from what I've read. Gotcha. So I'm interested to see. I wasn't a huge fan of Buddha and Nezra. Um, they have their merits. I haven't seen Buddha, but I did. I I liked Nezra, but it was too short for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't seen Three Y fully like attempt a kaiju film. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see what this one brings. Uh, it is Tokusatsu practical effects, which is great. Um, and one of the coolest parts is they're bringing uh, actors who have been in past Tokusatsu Godzilla, especially films. Mm. I mean, that uh, seems to be a Magu- trend with Free Y bringing familiar faces back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Megumi Odaka is actually in the cast for this film. She played Miki Sugusa in the Heisei Godzilla films, yep. and recently did some narration work for Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex, the Toho. Uh, the Toho uh, in- Toho endorsed fan project. Endorsed fan project, yes. Which is pretty exciting. Mm. Uh, but like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the other two projects, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to hold my breath on this one, see how it turns out. Mm. I'm willing and to then, check out. Likewise. And since 3Y uh, has a working relationship with... SRS Cinema, I, I fully expect this one to uh, also see a Blu-ray release probably in 2024. Hmm. Hopefully. Um, but speaking of SRS's previous relationships, they also probably what got them, um, probably what sort of sparked this, um, you know, rise in the popularity of independent kaiju cinema was um, Shinpei Hayashida's uh, Rego slash Raiga trilogy, which mm-hmm. um, he is actually working on a new film titled War of the Ninja Monsters, Jaron vs. Golra. Is that how it's right? <laughs> I think so. It's it's a play on. So essentially, from what I've heard, the film is Godzilla vs. Gamera, Gamera, but due to copyright laws, we can't actually do that. Um, so Jer- Jaron. I like Gojira and Gamora or Gora, whatever, however they want to. Probably like uh, Soda or something. Probably something um, like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also going to be Men in Suits. I'm a little worried though because God Riker versus King Oka is kind of uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's It's a mm. high bar to pass. You know, he's not going to. Is, is he going to be able to top it? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I'm a little worried, but I'm also excited because he's been posting updates on like the suits being made for the film, mm. and they look pretty interesting. Um, I'm just hoping he doesn't go with his filmmaking he did for God Raiga versus King Oga, where it feels like it was mostly made in Photoshop, or not Photoshop, Premiere Pro. Uh, I, I would much rather see see him return to like his Raiga and uh, Rigo phase where he has sets and whatnot and mm-hmm. kind of goes off that. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, I haven't seen any of the free in the trilogy at the moment. I, I've i seen all three of them and I can say I think he peaked with the first one, but I hope that he uh, he can turn that around with this one. I know there's a hint for another film after God Raiga versus King Oga, but I think he's moving on from that to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And he, the reason God Raiga versus King Oga was made was because of the success of uh, SRS cinema's licensing of Rigo and Raiga. So maybe he's making this one as well, kind of in hopes that SRS will pick it up and, go from there maybe maybe and i think he's gonna bank on the whole showa era thing because it's called war of the ninja monsters like that sounds very showa so 
even the I mean, designs reminds me, it kind of reminds me of of, of um, War of the God Monsters, <laughs> which is another. I was Netflix thinking. Film. Or this movies. is true. I was thinking more like War of the is it yeah, it's War of the Giant Monsters, which was the US Bolivian? title of Gamera versus or Gueron. Well, there's War of the Monster oh yeah, it's War of the Monsters, which is Barugan, and Return of the Giant Monsters with which is uh Gaios. Ah. If I remember correctly. Yeah, I forget I get I get forget which one's which sometimes. I'm pretty sure it's uh yeah, because it's Gamera the Invincible, War of the Monsters, Return of the Giant Monsters, uh, Destroy All Planets, Attack of the Monsters, uh, and then it's, I think Zegra didn't, it was Gamera versus Zegra, and then it was Gamera versus Monster X, <laughs> and then Super Monster. Mm. So, yeah. I see. It sounds really Showa to me, and it, the designs for the kaiju especially look Showa. So, but there's a lot of exciting stuff coming from Japan, especially. But one that I found really interesting that's a Japanese American co production was this film called Kaiju Island of Fire. Mm. Uh, it's a rated R kaiju film, it's a co production. Uh, it's got an American director, his name is. Uh, Andrew Phillips, he did stunt work for like Captain America, the first Avenger and whatnot. Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. It's coming in spring 2023. It's about an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the first film in a franchise, apparently. Uh, It's also going to be featuring some other kaiju alumni, Mm. uh, Kent Gilbert and Chuck Wilson, who were uh, some American actors in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah 1991, (laughs) are appearing in it. Um, One of them played uh... Wilson. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now this is the one that sold me. Tomoko Tomoko Ai. Ai. (laughs) <laughs> I saw that and like I had the biggest smile on my face because it's like really because she retired from acting. Mm-hmm. This is like her return to acting as well. Mm. Um, and I'll always welcome Tomoko Ai. Yeah, <laughs> I will happily welcome her. Um, so that's kind of exciting to to see this, and it's a it's a co production, which makes me even happier because we we don't get a lot of those anymore. So the fact that we're seeing that, yeah. I think, is another example of how we're becoming we're going into the new wave of the kaiju boom. Mm. Getting I mean, co productions. I mean, just recently, even though this isn't really a um, not really a twenty twenty three thing, but um, Gorgo was announced to be in the process of making a comeback of sorts. Right, in a animated uh, movie and yeah. comic book. Yeah. Which is, that's in, I'm curious to see what will happen with that one as well. Hmm. Hmm. It was an unexpected but pleasant um, surprise from this year, I'll say. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, but on, on the contrary to that, Something that I wasn't too excited with, uh, at least personally, was the Meg 2, The Trench. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of like an honorable mention kaiju movie, I guess. <laughs> I mean... Unhonorable, dishonorable? I, I hear the books are okay. Um, I know nothing about them other than that they exist, and there's like just as many, knew- if not more books than, in, than the goddamn Ring franchise. <laughs> Oh, God damn. I, I keep... know. <sighs> I'm sorry. I... You keep going back. It's it's ring is the ring box that is like right in front of me. It's can't escape my mind. You can't escape Sad- the curse of Sadako. Oh, God damn it. Anyways, what were you saying? Uh, I was just going to say, I know in the novels, uh, our main character who in the films is played by Jason Statham punches the Meg in the face. <laughs> And says, like, shut up, Meg, or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. The the sequel to The Meg comes out August 4th. It's a, a Warner Brothers co-production with uh, some Chinese companies. Hmm. Uh, 
It's directed by somebody named uh, Ben Wheatley, who sounds has familiar. He well, he all he's done is two episodes of Doctor Who and the U segment of ABCs of Death, and that's the only thing notable, like in the oh. kaiju area, because that uh, Adam Wingard worked on ABCs of Death as well. I mean, didn't some of our um, uh, Machine Girls and Tokyo Gore Police? Um directors and special effects artists also work on at least ABCs of deaths too. I think so. Yeah. I know there's definitely some J horror segments. Yeah. Cause I'm pretty sure Yoshihiro Nishimura did at least one section and there was someone else who I can't remember the name of. Yeah. I'd have to go back and look at those especially. But yeah, the Meg, I, I wasn't, I didn't care much for that film. I, Likewise. I went in knowing it was a Jason Statham movie. <laughs> and I still Boot like Bruce Willis. And I still came out um underwhelmed. I was expecting it to yeah, be more I, fun, honestly. Hmm? I was expecting it to be more fun, honestly. Yeah, I it wasn't it was a little too dumb for me. And you know, it's it's one of those examples of a sequel that I don't care about. Like, I, I don't know mm. how they can make a sequel more interesting. Mm. But speaking of sequels, that'll perhaps be more interesting than the previous films. Cloverfield could hopefully be either making his return or at least getting some updates next year. Right. We have Cloverfield 2.4. Yes. the very That's official. what I'm calling it. Very official. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's better than Untitled Cloverfield sequel. This is true. I hope they name it Cloverfield 2.4. That would be hilarious. I mean, yeah, because be it's... If, it's... if um, G and K got, was Godzilla and Kong, the battle for Earth. The only thing we'd love about that film. <laughs> I mean, you're not the only person to have made the joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, Cloverfield, who cares about Godzilla? Right. Everybody just wants to talk about Clover. Bro, he's, he's my man. I'm actually curious to see if they're going to uh, explore the the Clover Monsters uh, origins a bit more because this is going to be a direct sequel. Maybe. I'm I'm curious if they'll – I'm sure they'll have some sort of ARG marketing like every other – Oh, of course. It wouldn't be a Clover field without ARG. Do Paradox have one? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm not Though crazy. Though very briefly it did. Okay, I'm not crazy. Because I know 10 Cloverfield Lane definitely did, and obviously the first film's probably more, almost borderline more well-known for its marketing than the film itself. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Abrams is returning for this film, mm-hmm. but uh, so is Matt Reeves, but he's producing it. Yeah. Um, I think he's actually... Or- I think form. he's an executive. I think that's what he's going to fall under, which means, which means, if anything, be, little could be nothing. Could just be right. his names attached. Just because he directed the first one, yeah, pretty much. Because um, uh, Drew Goddard, that's his name, Drew Goddard, right? Uh, the writer of Cloverfield, and who went on to write uh, Pacific Rim Uprising, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, along with some episodes of uh, Daredevil, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. I'm, I need to fact check myself because I knew he he wrote some stuff that was like notable. Okay, yeah. So he did uh, the Cloverfield Paradox. Wait, it says he did Paradox and Cloverfield Lane as well. Oh. Uh, World War Z. He's uh, writing, I think he's directing the upcoming Sinister Six movie. 
Um, is it actually being made? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know Sony's been setting it, trying to make it for like twice. <laughs> but yeah. still. <laughs> Silly Sony. Yeah, we don't talk about Sony. Not I yet, mean, at least. We will I here mean, in a bit. Will. Here in a bit, we will. Um, but he's credited as a producer, I, I think EP as well, on on this Cloverfield sequel. Um, Joe Joe Barton is actually the writer for it, um, which an interesting connection. And I think we brought this up in our Cloverfield episode. Uh, is he is currently writing Cloverfield two point four, and he's working on the Matt Reeves uh, television series. Uh, the spinoff to the uh, Batman, the Penguin one. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Mm, interesting. Unless that too gets canceled from James Gunn. Eh, I, I I see that as less likely than literally any other project getting canceled at this point. Batgirl two point I mean, hey, people very. Con- it was pretty across the board that people liked the mm. Batman. So you know. This is true, but people like Henry Cavill as Superman as well. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, Black Adam didn't make enough money, so these things happen. Um, Just like the Cloverfield paradox. God damn it! I'm actually curious uh, when marketing and like this film's going to start because the Cloverfield films have been so secretive. Um, mm. All we really know is. Be in well in production, and they're just keeping it a secret. Mm-hmm. Well, I know the writer Joe Barton has been like very adamant that they haven't started filming yet. Like he's been writing it. Maybe that's uh, all a lie. <laughs> maybe it is. It, Abrams has lied a ton about the Cloverfield universe. So, um, but it's being directed by Babic Anvadi. Mm-hmm. Um. He hasn't done anything notable in the kaiju realm, uh, so this will kind of be his first first time doing anything like this. But I'm definitely interested to see what he can bring. Speaking of things that I'm not interested that I'm interested in uh, seeing being brought in, uh, one that I'm definitely not is the adaptation of the kaiju score uh, mm. coming from Sony, titled "The Kaiju Score," being written by Brian and Mark Gunn. Even though I don't think it'll come out in 2023, I figured if it does, it'll come out late 2023, but I have little to no hope for it. Yeah. Um, is that based on a... What, what is that based on exactly? It's based on a like four-issue comic book series that came out oh, last okay. year. Okay. It's about thieves trying to do a diamond heist while a kaiju. It's basically Dogura. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's basically Dogura, mm. but American, missing like all of the good people. Mm. Yeah, can we can we get Robert Dunham in this? No, no. Okay, fine. No, mm. rest in peace. Wait, is he dead? I'm pretty sure. Wait, actually, Robert Dunham. Yeah, Robert Dunham. American actor died August six two thousand and one. Oh no! I thought he was yeah. still alive. No. Um, then not. can we at least get um, what's the guy's name? He was in Ghidorah. Um, um, Yosuke Natsuki. Can we get him? I was no? I was no? going to say Akihiko Wakabayashi. How uh, too? Can we get both? Why not both? Both is good. <laughs> Maybe even a. Is Koizumi still alive? Pretty sure. Uh, I don't think Hiroshi Kozumi is. God damn it! Oh yeah, he died recently, didn't he? Yeah. God damn it. Um, but yeah, I'm not too familiar with um, Kaiju score, um, unfortunately. All I know is Matt Frank did the cover art for the first issue, and like I said, it's about people doing a heist while a kaiju attacks. Mm. But. Something I'm a bit more familiar with is uh, a big monkey. Are you familiar with this big monkey? I'm not. Well, his name 
is King Kong, and he's the eighth wonder of the world, man. Kong. We need yeah. Kong. The world, the world needs, needs him. him. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kong. Um, did we mention Skull Island, the Skull Island anime earlier? Or no, we did not. Okay. There's, there's, there's two Kong Skull Island, King Kong, Kong, projects. Kong Skull Island projects. Yeah, both yeah, uh, we've got... TV projects. One by Disney. Um, one by the studio who did Castlevania. I forgot the name. Is it Powerhouse? Uh, Power Powerhouse Animation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One is connected to the monsters. One is not. The one that is uh, by Powerhouse and being distributed on Netflix. Mm. I think that's a like tie-in in between Skull Island and GVK, from what I heard. Mm. Um, I mean, it was announced that, like years ago, and there's been we had a still, <laughs> yeah, and then radio silence once again. Yeah, so, so maybe it's not even that. happening. I mean. I, I'd say it's probably happening because it, it's a trend that we just that these projects get announced and then we just get radio silence and then all of a sudden just happens get advertising like two weeks later it's out and then people talk about it for about a week and then they don't care a week I think you mean a day that too that's what happened with black <laughs> a day two days maybe three then it was. Um, uh, when's the when's the GVK trailer, bro? I remember those days. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in this. Um, I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it's yeah, good. Yeah, I I don't have very much high hopes to be honest. I'm more interested yeah. in the in the Disney Plus uh, adaptation of the Joe DeVito King Kong novels. Yeah. Uh, that seems more interesting to me. I, a while back, the it, this was announced, uh, but that project seemed to f- fall out of production. Um, and then this one appeared. Uh, James Wan's uh, Atomic Monster is producing it, mm. uh, if I remember correctly. Ironically, it's his it's his company's first monster project, right? Um, unless you want to count uh, Aquaman. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Um, but Fair James enough. Wan, I don't think, is really working on the film, to my understanding. I think he's, a, I think he's like, a producer on it. Or is he an executive? So he's financing it. I think he might just yeah. be because his company is. I mean, I mean, from what I understand, he's he's not the most hands-on as a producer, but, like, he still, you know, at least visits set, <laughs> visits production offers a few suggestions here and there from what I understand. At least right. that's what he did on the Conjuring films from what I've uh, read. Gotcha. Yeah, and, you know, the thing about this Kong uh, Disney Plus know. show is I think it's going to end up being a direct sequel to the story of 33 um, because the Joe oh. DeVito uh, novels, I believe, are direct sequels to that 33 novelization. Mm. Um I which see. is now public domain, but this mm. product, this production does have the blessing of the Cooper estate. Hmm. The King Kong copyright stuff is a mess, by the way. Yeah. Oh, God. So, you know, it's, I'm kind of in, excited, but I'm also like, I'm I don't interested. know if we'll get it. I don't know if we'll get it this coming year or if it'll be the following. I, I think the Disney Plus series will probably be like 24, maybe even 25 depending on mm-hmm. how production goes. Um, I think Skull Island will be this year. I, I think that's quite likely. Unless or, it just completely falls off the face of the earth. Right. And, but to be honest, I think we'll get uh, pro- the Project Nemesis series before we'll get the King Kong one, even though they oh, were yeah. announced about the same time. I keep forgetting uh, Project Nemesis. This is um, adaptation exists or is going to. <laughs> mm-hmm. I keep yeah, and it's that. from Sony TV, so Sony's doing two kaiju no. projects that aren't ninety eight. Well, um, second and third times the charm, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm going to put more money on the Project Nemesis series than the kaiju score. Yes, yeah, um, I'm more interested in that. 
it is a TV show, so that's that intrigues me. And it's from uh, Chad Sten- Stansky, mm-hmm. uh, the director of the John Wick films. Oh, um, oh, yeah, that's right. Did he direct four? Like John Wick four? I think he is directing John Wick four. Oh, great. So I, I'm I'm interested to see. I haven't read the novel, so I don't really know what. Yeah. What's to come? To be honest, the last few the last few things we've mentioned here are all like adaptations and remakes of stuff that I I pretty much haven't seen. Um, yeah. Another one that's coming out. Information on anyways. Right. Another example of this is the Untitled Leo remake. A uh, mm-hmm. UK company got the rights to remake the Thailand. Uh, Taiwanese, Taiwanese, Tha- Thailand, Thailand. It's Thailand. The Thailand film uh, Leo, the monstrous lizard, the monstrous beast. I think is what it's called. Uh, it's a giant lizard movie. They got the rights to remake it, and that's it. Like, there's no other news on it. It could end up being like the host remake that was announced. Like, they get the rights, the the earth. and it disappears. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, God, I hope that Train to Busan remake disappears off the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but beyond that, there's also the Singapore uh, upcoming film Circle Line. Yeah, a trailer for that came out not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of like a... From what I understand, it's um, Singapore's first CG-led um, uh, feature film because Singapore, to my understanding, has like a very small, small. film industry, if you can even yeah. call it. That. <laughs> I've I've been it's been marketed as Singapore's first giant monster movie, um, which is I, I'll be interested to see what what comes of that. It yeah. reminded me of the sequences from Gamera to Advent of Legion. Yeah, um, yeah. When I watched the trailer, that's the vibes I got. There was something else it reminded me of, but I can't think of what it was. It was set on. It was something else that was set on a train, and not Train to Busan. <laughs> I was about to say, are you talking about Train to Busan? No, 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 no. It was something else. It was probably some sort of low budget creature feature. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like the Men in Black sequence with the giant worm. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I, I I've seen the Men in Black movies, but most of them are kind of a blur. <laughs> Fair enough. Off Maybe you just got kind of red. Maybe you just no, got red lighted. No, no. I set you up for that. God damn it! <laughs> really set uh, you up. But. I'm excited to see what comes of this. The trailer was subtitled, so I am wondering if it's going to get yeah. uh, a Western release. Speaking of hopefully getting a Western release, The Lake, please. Mm-hmm. That one has been marketed as Thailand's first giant monster movie, which isn't mm-hmm. necessarily true. You've got Garuda from 2004. Um, but this The Lake looks amazing. And I've heard that mm-hmm. they actually have like set up like a distributor, it's just they're waiting on finalizing the contract. Okay, okay, thank God, thank God. Because that looks amazing. That looks like a combination of like the host and Godzilla Fifty Four. Mm. The practical monster looks amazing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it looks astonishing, and uh, even Leo is uh, supposed to get a release from a company that apparently doesn't normally do this stuff. Um, they're renaming it uh, the beast below when they release it to the States, but that's something I'm really excited to see. I see. Um, and then of course you've got uh Shin Ultraman that's getting a, yes. a U.S. Uh, theatrical release. Finally. Yes. You will finally get to see it. Right. <laughs> Uh, finally, a film that's been waiting decades, Space Monster and Magui. That's another one. Yeah. That, uh, that's that's seeing the light of day outside of Korea, finally, on Blu-ray, DVD, and VHS. Mm-hmm. Is the Blu-ray out yet? Or? No, it starts shipping in January. So okay. Okay. That, that's coming out in 2023 as well. 
Um, I've heard rumors of even there's a short film called Daikaiju Bugan. It's a giant monster short film. I've heard that might be getting a release stateside, but I don't I know from who. Fat. Yeah, when I when I heard about it, I was like, "What is this?" And is it getting released? It looks like it's already been released. And they said, "I've heard rumors it might be getting a Western release." And I said, mm-hmm. "Okay, I'll see that when I I'll believe that when I see it." So, um, but that's exciting to see. Uh, yeah. Hmm. hmm. And then outside of that, um, you obviously mentioned Shin Ultraman, but um, outside of theatrical releases, we got um, Ultraman Max coming to DVD early next year. Mm-hmm. And then while we wait to see what Mill Creek does with the license, they're also doing that compilation blu-ray set uh ultra yeah. versus red king yeah um which might have sd on blu-ray but i heard recently they added a second disc to the set and so now i'm thinking they're gonna have a blu-ray disc and a dvd disc and mm. that aggravates I mean, me to could, no end. it could still be sd on blu-ray yeah but it's only 16 episodes hmm I so it, I don't, it depends. It depends. Um, it does, I guess. Uh, but we're also going to see. Speaking of Blu-ray, um, my personal most excited kaiju film for next year being released to Blu-ray is *Thrilling Bloody Sword*. It's a Taiwanese film from the early 1970s oh, um, yeah. that features giant monsters. Error four 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 four. The distributor that did *Intomi Extinction* that I brought up earlier. Uh, they're releasing it with a brand new oh, transfer. Didn't um, they? Did, were they the ones who also did uh, Funky Forest? Yes, they did Funky okay. Forest and Warped Forest. Uh, and they've got a, they've got like three or four more. They've released one, um, and they're working on more. So that I'm excited uh, to see. There's also like Decca Ranger and Ryuki. Uh, yeah, Shout Factory is releasing. Uh, speaking of Ryuki, Media Blasters is. Uh, Working on a common Rider box set, they announced it, but the problem was when Funimation bought Crunchyroll and turned into Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll then went and bought Right Stuff Anime, and when they did that, they removed all of the hentai titles and basically blocked Media Blasters from them using them as a distributor, mm. and because of that, the common Rider set suffered. It was supposed to be a... Uh, Steelbook uh, limited edition uh, collectors with Common Rider Zio, J, Common uh, Rider the Common uh, Rider World, Common uh, Rider Shin Prologue, Common Rider the First, Common Rider the Next. Um, but now that's on ha- on a bit of a hold as they try and figure out distributors. Um, I know recently they opened up their own uh, store internally. Um, so mm. hopefully that does well because they also had Tokyo the Last Megapolis and its sequel, uh, Tokyo, uh, uh, Tokyo the Last um, the Last War. Last War. Uh, yes, yes, they announced that they were going to do a uh, box set with those, and even I think they talked about including the anime OVA Doomed Megapolis that uh, they've already that released. Mm-hmm. They released that uh, last year, I believe. Huh. Um, I did so, not know that existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all based off the same novels. Hmm. So maybe we'll uh, we'll be able to see those. I'd love to at least. Mm. Um, well, at least if nothing else, we're still getting um, *Common Rider Black* from Discotech. That that is true. Discotech is doing that. Um, and I'm hoping they do more. I'm hoping for Black RX, maybe more *Common Rider Showa stuff. Please. Metal Heroes will always be a welcome uh, thing for me as well. Yeah. Didn't Gavin just come out? Yeah, Gavin came out a few, uh, f- I think two months ago, mm-hmm. and they did Just Beyond. I'm hoping those did well enough that they have warranted more. And I know Discotech is planning on releasing more stuff. Uh, Tokusatsu, they did like Legend of Monster Birds, Dinosaurs mm-hmm. and Monster Birds. Yeah, uh, I mean, they've got a new Blu-ray for that coming out too, I believe. Mm-hmm. Cutie Honey the Live. Uh, they released uh, Uzumaki, 
uh, the live action adaptation of the Junji Ito story. God, uh, I need to read that and watch the film. So there's they they've got a lot going on. Um, SRS hasn't announced a whole lot. I know they're doing a wide release of Day of uh, of Destruction, and I they have an untitled Tokusatsu title for February. I'm gonna bet it's the three Y uh, horror film Ghost Cat Rhapsody um, that was released I think last year. Um, it's heavily inspired by like the Ghost Cat films of the 1960s, uh, like uh, Kuroneko. Any chance, of, any chance of Yuzo? I could see Yuzo um, coming out. Uh, it would be towards the end of next year. Um, I I support that 100. percent I actually I've uh, had the privilege of seeing Yuzo, um, and I wrote a review for it on Kaiju Ramen Media. Uh, mm where I talk about my experience. Uh, I got to meet with uh, director Ishe. Uh, this is my second time. I also got to meet with him when I saw the premiere of attack of the giant teacher. So that was really nice. Mm. Um, so I would love to see Yuzo uh, get a release. I know if they do announce that I'm going to, I might have something I can, try to put on there if they'll let me, but we'll, we'll have to see if that happens or not. Um, but we kind of blasted through the, that last few things there, but, uh, there was one thing we actually forgot to mention oh. and that was the Apple plus TV series. Oh, yeah. from <laughs> Legendary how, Godzilla how I, and the yeah. Titans. Yes. That just finished, um, filming, um, or not too long is, ago. Or is about to finish filming like, Oh, no, it would have finished either today or yesterday is when it finished filming, I believe. Yeah, that that's a project I'm curious about. Curious about. I don't know if I'm interested because it, it's in between 2014 and King of the Monsters. I mean, but it's, it's less in between and more just a sequel to 2014 from what I've this heard. This is true. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but... Kurt Russell's in it. Who? Kurt Russell. Oh, that's right. That's right. Kurt Russell yeah, is in it. Kurt Russell. And, <laughs> and, and his, his – yeah. That's like the most interesting thing about that project though yeah, to me at least. Kurt Russell. Um, I've heard rumors that they might include Toho Kaiju, but I have my doubts. I, I've, heard, I've heard that there's some – some sort of secret of the fifties, because I know it's probably going to be sort of similar to like the arrow TV show where like part of it takes place in the present or I modern guess in this day. case, uh, or... yeah, modern day. And there's also going to be like a flashback story as well, probably going like mm-hmm. simultaneously. Um, so there's some sort of secret into the fifties. I, hmm, I want to say I heard there was like, I heard there was like Belranda from Skull Island, something related to him. Yeah, because we know book. he had one interaction with Godzilla. Yeah, uh, yeah. prior prior to the I mean, events of I mean, Skull that's Island. The only thing that sets off the events of Skull Island, right? Godzilla's everything. Yeah. <laughs> um. um yeah, I'm interested in seeing it. Um, like, uh, we're not exactly the biggest supporters of the MonsterVerse, but, you know, it's got Godzilla, whatever. I can suck it up. I can't. I'm still going to complain. Oh, I never said I wasn't going to complain. Good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'll just watch it. Yeah, we'll see. And then complain. And then we can do a whole podcast episode about why it's the worst thing in the world. I mean, surely it can't be worse than GVK. This, well, hopefully. Well, I'll tell you one thing that will be worse than GVK, but it doesn't oh, no. come out next year. Oh, no. Godzilla and Kong. Oh, the Battle for Earth. The unwanted sequel that nobody asked for. That's going to be the title of reviews. Godzilla and Kong, the unwanted sequel nobody asked for. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when they said continue the monsterverse, you know, you know, we were just kidding, 
everyone was just kidding. It was it was just a massive prank. I thought people just wanted a Kong sequel. <laughs> they wanted that monkey business. They did want that monkey business. Um, but yeah, look. I hope against all the odds that it'll be good. But I have just very no severe doubts. Right, exactly. I just hope, at the very least, Godzilla is handled better, if yeah, nothing we'll, else. We'll have to wait and see. And that that's the either the exciting part or the unfortunate part about everything we've discussed today, which is... Particularly we since I missed see. out on being, on being there for filming. Can you believe that? Yeah, poor Rex. If you want to hear about his experience <laughs> on that, definitely check out bonus episode number four. <laughs> Or was it three where we did the G Fest? I'm pretty sure it was was five. No, because five was. Six was Godzilla Day. Was it? Yes. Mr. Editor, you should know this stuff. Yes, that's why I do. Ah, okay. So definitely (laughs) check that out uh, where we talk about not only G Fest, but Rex Adventure trying to find the location where they were filming. Master Monster um, Cinema experience. Yes. Yeah, so, episode four was the round table of the bonus. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. Anyways, like I was saying, the unfortunate part is we got to wait for all this. Yeah. But in the meantime, this will be the last episode you hear of us until 2023. So you, oh the God. listeners, are going to have to wait as well. Not as long, but you will have to wait. Yeah, we're not on hiatus. No, nah, that. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> nah. But I think this actually will clock in as. No, this isn't going to be one of our longest episodes. This one. One of our longer main episodes. Yes. I see. So, anyways, as we were saying, you will see us next year. And this, as we mentioned, is episode 49. You will get our milestone episode of episode 50 next year. Mm. That means we're halfway to 100, which means we have, as of this episode, we have uh, beat the average uh, episode uh, count for podcast seven times over. The average count is seven. So we have hit 49. That means we've done it seven times over. So we have at least beaten seven podcasts. Awesome. I think. I think it's a little bit more than that. But, you know, if that's what you want to say, then by all means. (laughs) Yeah. So with that being said, I think we have covered everything we can. And we can go ahead and end this on linking ourselves. Not like we've been doing that all episode. Mm -hmm. But if we haven't, please feel free to send us a message. Yeah. So, <laughs> Rex, why don't you go ahead and link yourself? <clears throat> well, I'm Rexino. You can find me on YouTube at Rexino, on Twitter at Rex underscore Xenomorph, and on Instagram, Rex underscore Xeno. And if you want to, you know, look at some of the – if you want some updates on potential future uh, Tokusatsu-related projects, I write for the Tokusatsu Network, so you – so I'm writing currently on the Ultraman regulars first mission that we mentioned earlier. So I'll probably end up covering more brand new uh, Kaiju and Tokusatsu media. Definitely check that out. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter at ET13 Productions, on Instagram at ET13 Productions, uh, on YouTube at ET13 Productions, or you can find my writing on the Kaiju Ramen Media website or on in the magazine for Kaiju Ramen Media, Kaiju Ramen Magazine. Definitely check those out. And uh, yeah, so definitely check out all of that stuff. And please check out Rex's uh, stuff that he's linked. He works really hard on all of his work. Yes, this is uh, going to be a long, long, long day in the editing chair. Not too long. Just a little bit. It's a it's an almost three hour recording. Please send help. <laughs> but besides My that, family. please don't forget to rate the podcast on iTunes. That boosts our ratings and helps us get recommended to more people just like you. If you don't have an Apple device, which I don't blame you, I don't kinda. 
<laughs> update on my ha- on my uh, end. I am the official owner of a MacBook Pro. So I guess I own an Apple device now. Congratulations. Thank you. My hard drive the, says thank you. The the, <laughs> uh, the laptop's name is Markalite. My hard drive says thank you. <laughs> you you're just going to keep going, aren't you? My hard drive says thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, Markalite says oh, hi. Markalite is happy to be here. And Markalite will be my new... Uh, device to work on my projects mm-hmm. can mark Eli do editing e- elijah can't do editing <sighs> elijah refuses to do editing <laughs> damn okay I'm elijah... Gonna go <laughs> elijah says you can tweet us and follow us on Twitter at K A I J U underscore C O N V E R S. If you don't have a Twitter, you can follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook. If you're like me before podcasting and you don't have any social media, lucky you, you can email us at kaijuconversation at gmail.com, all lowercase, all one word, you know the drill. As always, we'll read your reviews on air for everyone to hear. We also have a Teespring store. Eventually, we'll have original artwork on there. But until then, we do have our logo if you want to support that and rock that Kaiju Conversation merch. If you'd like to chat with Rex and I one-on-one or just in general, check out our Discord server. Uh, You can, like I said, chat with us or talk to people that relate and love the stuff that you do as well. Uh, Recently, let me check here. We had a discussion on, I believe they were talking about Johnny Sacco. Uh, oh. Last time I checked, I'm going to check real quick here in our general one chat room. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, they were talking. Johnny Sacco and then the Cure of Kubei Gym playlist. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I and then s- that. <laughs> somebody asked if Robocop is Tokusatsu. And if you ask August Ragona, he's going to say that he <laughs> created Robocop because <laughs> he sent uh, the director of Robocop a tape of Metal Heroes. And that's totally what made Robocop a thing. Yeah, totally. Totally. There's no, uh, no contradicting um opinion evidence or evidence no 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 no, no quotes no. no no nothing nope i don't know mm-hmm. what you're talking about so anyway, i was born before part. all of you and i uh i wrote an ultraman book uh i uh did i mention i wrote an ultraman book i was i was i watched the stuff all before you were born Mora is wanted um, for war crimes against Skigilla. uh p.s i created robocop p.s buy my book <laughs> PPPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. My hard drive. Check out my that. kaiju vlog. Blog. My hard drive is thanking you a lot right now. So definitely, uh, if you find that stuff fun, definitely check that out. It's a great community, uh, full of great. If someone people. wants to donate me a hard drive. Feel free. He's just spiraling back to the hard drive. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime we upload a video. If you want to hear the probably close to 25 minutes of bloopers, uh, that will be going live on the YouTube channels long, along with all of our other bloopers and mini-sodes. And uh, our mini-sodes are like uh, side topics that you probably wouldn't hear on the podcast, but we decided to make uh, little episodes on the YouTube channel about. Uh, we also have an interview with Mecha Godzilla designer Jared Kurchevsky. I always mispronounce his name. I'm sorry on the channel as well. A huge thanks to Rex for editing these episodes. Obviously, mm. this one is going to be a long one, but we appreciate all <sighs> the hard work he does. And uh, definitely, please check out his links down in the description below. Go to his link tree and. You can um, find all of his stuff that way. Get, um, PTSD from the Godzilla Day episode. And with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here. So thank you guys so much Woo-hoo. for listening. On to Rex the is just week. determined to continue to interrupt no, me this no, entire no, no, no. time. Keep talking. Keep talking. 
So anyway, as I was saying, a huge thanks to you guys for listening and making it this far into the podcast, either this episode or the the show itself. And uh, stay tuned for episode 50. We got some exciting stuff and I can't wait for you guys to see it. So thank you guys again. And as always, please remember life's too short to not talk big. See you in 2023 guys. Ciao.